All right, so I just want to talk about this section a little bit, pick up just a couple of more things that we can see. Um, we can see the trusses where they're um, suggested they should go and same with the floor system, suggested where they should go. The reason I'm saying they're suggested where they should go is, is we don't have any structural um, information here at all per se um, in residential um, construction. Um, these plans will be sent to a, a, a truss and floor designer typically and they will design where these trusses need to go. Um, and their shape and size and, and uh, the, the whole structure of that. Same with the floor system too. Um, it'll be really close um, de depending on how it's drawn. Sometimes these details are, are, are a little bit vague, other times they're quite uh, what appear to be quite static and clear, um, but by no means should we um, assume that we're going to have a floor system or a truss system that's going to look exactly like that. Um, it'll be pretty close in this case because it's not that complicated. Another really good piece of information to see on here, just as sort of a general overlook of that, of the, of that slice of the house in this direction. Again, um, things that are in the background are, are lighter uh, in line weight. Uh, direction of swing is also shown, so the, the arrow points to uh, where the hinge side of the door is. Um, it's a double outswing door here, or garden door, if you look on the main floor plan. Um, you will see that, but it's also illustrated that way. It's just a different language to illustrate the same thing. Um, suggested material um, lengths is, or sizes as well and composition. Um, so it's assumed there'll be an 11 and 7 eighths um, engineered eye joist and the spacing is assumed as well. Again, this needs to be determined by an engineer and same with the subfloor as well. Another interesting thing to note um, on this drawing is just on the far left here, we've got sort of an assembly um, dis description. And what it does, um, sometimes this will be um, noted with a, a symbol and will refer you back to another legend. Um, in this case, because there's room and it's not that complex of a project, it's all just labeled right here. So it starts from the interior. So it starts with half inch gypsum board or drywall, quite commonly known. And then we've got a, uh, a vapor barrier or a vapor retarder. And then we've got what was commonly known as a frost wall. Uh, this one, in this case, two by four, can be two by six most likely these days. Um, and then filled with some uh, cavity, filled with some insulation, a little bit of an air space. Then we've got concrete and uh, concrete foundation wall. Uh, the only one thing maybe missing off here is some sort of damp proofing or some kind of membrane that would be on the outside of the foundation. So this tells what that assembly is, um, reading from top to bottom, um, from inside out. Another place that we can see a good example of that is going back to our elevation plan. Um, we've got those all over the place. So there's a ton of information. It's nice not having to reference to another sheet again because it's not that large of a project. Um, we've got our wall assembly uh, on the, uh, the main floor uh, above grade. I'm starting from the inside, starting with a half inch chip, our poly, our two by six stud wall. Uh, it's spacing regime, 16 inches on center. Uh, cavity fill, our 3-8 sheathing, so we can get that information that we need um, when we're doing that outside the inside measurement that we talked about earlier, and then an air barrier and some siding. Note that the exterior finishes are not shown on any of these um, sections or plan views. Um, they're shown on our um, exterior elevations, which we'll look at in a moment. Uh, down below, sort of the same information that we read off the other section, um, but it's worth revisiting. Another sheet that we haven't talked about yet are our exterior elevations. Um, so uh, in this case, there'll be four views, so a front elevation and a, and a rear or back elevation. Um, these um, don't have any dimensions on them, and that's by design. Um, we should never scale or dimension off these plans. We're given a scale here, and you could ballpark it, but you can't um, necessarily uh, expect to get any kind of accurate dimensioning off this. The, the pure intent is just to sort of show uh, in, in, in elevation view what these windows look like. We can get their, their uh, swings, again, similar um, to the other uh, section we looked at. This is the hinge side. Uh, and this is the hinge side of that door is where the arrow points to. Just to give us a general sense, um, sometimes there, you, you can see sometimes some suggested materials might be labeled on here, uh, but in lots of cases it is not. Um, and normally in a project like this, because this is sort of a, uh, um, a home that maybe doesn't have an owner yet, or maybe these uh, material choices just haven't been made yet, so it's just an overall general suggestion. So uh, that's the back and the front. 
we also have a right or left. Um, sometimes if the house um, has a specific um, site intended, um, this will say uh, east or west or whatever the orientation of the house is, but quite often you'll just see that as well. That is a few things on here, a little bit about maybe the batten width, uh, the roof pitch again is indicated, a few things like that, but again just a general overall of what the uh, general appearance of the outside of the house is supposed to look like. So we're just going to take a look at another plan here that um, some of the um, details are laid out just a little bit differently. Um, it's, it's almost uh, similar to um, interior door schedules as opposed to um, written right on the plan. So these assemblies um, have a, a notation, a W1, an RJ, a W1, an F2, an F1. Um, if we look over here, um, they're called section notes. Uh, we are looking at a section. Um, and it'll tell us exactly what those assemblies are. So I can run down to W1, I can find out what this uh, uh, detail is made up of. It takes a lot of clutter off the drawing, um, super handy, so I can just come over here and get all the detail I need, so it, it even tells us it's the exterior wall, even though it, it's pretty obvious, but um, better safe than sorry. Um, finished as spec, doesn't really talk about the exterior very much, probably hasn't been decided at that point, um, but we do know we need some building paper and some sheathing and and what the uh, studs and the insulation and those types of things are spec'd out to be. So um, this one, um, this one runs outside in. Um, I've seen it both ways. Uh, there's different conventions, different architects will choose how they want to do that. Um, they'll either, uh, the previous plan we looked at um, ran from the inside to the out. This one runs outside in, um, totally acceptable. We've also got our floor systems on here too, um, um, F1. You can see this upper floor talks about um, the finished flooring will be as spec, so carpet, hardwood, whatever the decision may be, it's not uh, not holding anybody accountable here for that. Um, but the rest of it, it will be um, some uh, bonded subfloor engineered truss system as spec because it needs to go to the engineer. Um, but built up beams as spec, same thing, and then drywall on the ceiling underneath. So um, it also uh, shows insulation um, on the drawing. Um, but not necessarily in the detail, which is an interesting thing to pick up, but it's very clear that um, the insulation um, in the floor is between the bedrooms, so um, let's put the note right on the plan there. So lots of variation, but just sort of a different way of doing it, which is really cool. Another thing that's um, kind of nice to see is this energy efficiency requirement. Um, probably page space may have dictated it where they decided to put this. We've got typical wall assemblies over here. Um, and we've got their, um, their uh, resistance values um, tabulated over here, so it, it helps the builder to try and achieve and, and, and uh, um, find, uh, meet um, building code and make sure that they've got um, the correct, or at least minimums, um, in terms of thermal resistance on all the different assemblies. So that's nice, nice to see that there as well.